boys, um, actually uh, the best at the end, I would say. I'm Aww. very happy to welcome Goldfish here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One of my most favorite artists at the moment. I had them play in Vienna. It was absolutely exciting. I have never seen something in that way before in my long career. And we were trying to get them over to give you a little bit of an, of an impression of their work because they have a very unique story coming from South Africa, um, developing, uh, well, in extremely in the last time, but I don't know everything about the background as well, um, which I'm curious to hear. And uh, also like focusing a bit on the live perspective because they are performing a lot with live instruments, uh, which is actually really mind blowing. We have weak internet here, but you really have to see some of the videos, which are really, really um, impressive. So such as before, I would like to what would like to ask you to introduce yourself sure. and okay. tell your kind of story. Hi guys, my <laughs> name is Dominic. I'm born in Zimbabwe, grew up in Cape Town, um, studied music at the University of Cape Town, which is where I met Dave. And uh, I play keyboards, uh, double bass, electric bass, a um, bit of bad guitar, a bit of bad drums. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, basically wanted to be a musician my whole life, started out in bands. We actually have very similar stories in that way. Both started out in being, playing in bands and uh, studied a degree in music at the University of Cape Town. And, you know, Dave and I started a jazz band together originally um, when we were about 19, 20 years old and uh, started playing like hotel lobbies and, you know, any way to pay our tuition while we were studying. And, um, you know, we'd play like parties where the DJ would take over after us. And we were like, you know, we could do that, but maybe using our instruments. And, um, you know, to cut a long story short, Dave and I started Goldfish about eight, eight years ago, nine years ago now. And um, basically there was no handbook on how to do this thing. It was just like, you know, it was trying to take the best of a band and the best of a DJ into something which uh, could be melded into yeah. something new, you know. I think, you know, being, being like primarily live musicians to start with, we came at, we came at the whole um, music production and performance angle with always doing things live anyway. So we, we used to travel like every week to a gig, a jazz gig out in the winelands. And Cape Town's got amazing winelands and you play lots of like venues. But they, it takes about an hour to drive there. We drove there every week and we used to listen to Saint Germain and we used to listen mm. to Moby and Fatboy Slim. And, 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 um, and in between, you know, John oh. Coltrane and all the jazz guys. And... We were like, oh, we really love this music where they're incorporating live elements and real music, mm -hmm. including with the electronic music. So, you know, we got together and we started producing our first track on a, on a, like a PC computer with a crappy sound card and, you know, whatever we did. But we're broke students. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't about the equipment, <laughs> it was about the ideas. And we managed to get the ideas out. And, you know, from, from that perspective, we we gave it to a few of our friends, you know, as you do, and peop the reaction came back really well. And then we, we managed to get a, f a gig, and we played, we actually played sitting down. Can you believe it? Because we had so I much had gear. We, we had, had like so much PC computers and massive keyboards and like hardware <laughs> samplers. And, and then um, we played this gig, and I think it was a friend of ours' birthday party in a small little club. And afterwards, people were like, that was awesome. Um, maybe you should try standing up. That was kind of like the first piece of advice we took. Uh, I think we, you know. Um, and now you stand on the table. No, now exactly. Stand now on, the stand on the table. Getting, you know. <laughs> um, so basically, you know, we went from, we, went, we produced a few tracks together and then we were like, okay, well, we're live musicians, so let's play live. You know, so perform. So I play, um, I play the saxophone and the flute and uh, clarinet and a whole lot of woodwind instruments. Um, so when we played a few, we made a few songs, we went out and we, we performed them with loops. We were running loops and we were running hardware sequence, sequences. Hardware and sequences and Dom was obviously playing keyboards and he plays upright bass and uh, I was playing sax and, and we, we kind were, of... Yeah, we were doing like 16, 16 track multi-channel mixing. So instead of, <laughs> we would so be like bringing the picture, live. bringing the hi-hat, bringing the snare drum, reverb sand on this thing, filter cut off on this thing. Um, Dave's like triggering the vocal a cappella, playing the saxophone at the same time, I'm playing the double bass. <laughs> and then we realized that maybe that was taking it too far. You know, like the audience was like, 
What is that? <laughs> okay, that's He's really good. Pressing a lot of <laughs> buttons. <laughs> and we realized, you know, that one of the fundamental things as well is connecting with your audience. You know, it's, it's one thing to be able to be doing a technical mix or doing this crazy stuff, but does it sound good? And is it something that the audience can react to? And you know, yeah. and that's a that's also a fine balance, kind of linking that together. You know, between doing something which is impressing to you or maybe other DJs or producers, but is is it is it at the end of the day, this is entertainment. We're here to like make people dance, yes. and that can be the you know somewhere where the, the lines can get blurred. I'm sure you've watched DJs which maybe are playing amazing music but aren't moving you because they're not interacting with their audience or you know. I suppose it depends on the style because some yeah, of styles of music, if you were going too mad, you would be shunned. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. But um, uh, you know, so, f so basically, the, the the premise of Goldfish, the, the what we do is we we play electronic music, which is uh, so which has now gone from sort of more down tempo chill out music to being more house deep, deep house, house kind of based music, and and um, we we play the, we play our instruments with our music that we produce and tracks, and then instead of you know, instead of us just sort of jamming along to a track, like we put a track on the jam, well, we can do that. It's not a problem, and there's, you know, that, that has its place. But you know, what we, where we've done it is that we've actually made the m the music and the instruments, you know, f come together and form a part. So there's actually real parts in the song which we are playing. Yes, we jam, we we jazz musicians, <coughs> so we just we can improvise and go crazy, and we do. You know, mm. and that's and that's one of our one of our angles. But the difference between what we do and what a guy, a DJ, and a saxophone player does is that we we have like songs, specific songs, and specific mm. parts in songs which we are then performing and creating. And we have we have like open sections where we can like you know start jamming and start getting ideas and start you know we can play with the audience just as the same way as like a, a DJ can kind of build things up you know we also do that from a technical like from a sort of a DJ aspect but then we add our live instruments on top of that to really kind of make it even more exciting and things like live looping sampling the crowd or sampling the saxophone or I'll play a riff on the double bass and Dave will grab it and you know you, sometimes it's loop based music so you don't want to be playing the same riff over and over again manually so I'll play it and sometimes he'll have sampled it onto his chaos pad or and then you can keep that going and then be creative with that. Um, mm. But to just get back to our story, I think what happened was, you know, when we first started out, we geographically, like a lot of you guys are from all over the world, um, but, you know, Cape Town's not really like a dance music capital. We're on the end of Africa, there's a huge, you know, dance music scene there, but it's not necessarily relevant to what's happening in Europe or America or, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere. And so we'd been booked to play a show in Cannes when we first started out um, in France, in yeah. France, and uh, we thought, you know, Ibiza's, you know, just nearby. We should go to this place. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's like really big into dance music. We should go there. <laughs> and we'd met some uh, a friend of ours, a German guy, who'd seen us playing in Cape Town, and he said, if you ever want to come to Ibiza, you can come stay at my resort. Um, but the deal is, I won't, I won't be able to pay you, but you can stay for free in one of the, you know, apartments where so we were like, hey man, can we come do a show? We're in Ibiza. He's like, sure. So it turned out it was like a, a spring break kind of really? for, for German. The um, Kunta Arabi. Yeah, yeah, in the north of the island, like, By you know, Eskana. where you finish school and like kids just go and they go crazy. And um, so we did the gig and, you know, that, that obviously was just like a little <laughs> tree falling in a forest. Nothing ever happened. And somehow we, um, we had a contact to go play for 20 minutes at Cafe Mambo. Um, before Pete Tong. Before Pete Tong. And of course we got there. And you know what Cafe Mambo looks like. It's you know, a tiny DJ booth. We have like all our gear and our basses and stuff. So they're like, I don't know if we can get you to play here. We're like, no, we want to play, we want to play. Like whatever we can do, we can play. 20 minutes, we'll do it. So they set up two t like of the dining tables outside <laughs> on, the, you know, on the terrace. And we set up our gear on there and ran one mono RCA cable from Dave's desk into the DJ I had to, run, I had to go booth. into the studio upstairs and find the RCA cable that was long enough to get from where we were to the DJ, to the, the 900, to, so get it was to like plug in there. Mono, but terrible connection, yeah, 20 minutes before Pete Tong, like 
you know, a whole bunch of people watching the sunset, didn't know what was going on, and we started playing, and everyone turned around and started watching us. And um, Pete Tong was there, and at the time, the MD of Pasha happened to be there as well. And they were like, wow, you know, this is, they enjoyed it, you know. And uh, if Dave hadn't found that cable, and if we hadn't, <laughs> you know, really, like, fought to, ha to do that 20 minutes, um, we wouldn't be here today. Because from that 20 minutes, Pete Tong was like, and uh, Danny Whittle, the ex-MD of Pasha, said, what are you doing later? Can you come play at Pasha? You know, come play, play a set. And we were like, oh, let's check our diary. Oh, we're free. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, that night, uh, 3 a.m. in the morning, went to go play in one of the smaller rooms in Pasha. But um, we ended up playing with uh, Breach, Ben West Beach. It was, he was playing a show there. And his set got shortened a bit. And we got, uh, you know, maybe 45 to an hour of, of the set there. And from then, we got a record deal with Pasha. Um, we played the Pasha residency for five but years. I, I, think the, I think the lesson, well, I think what the, the lesson Dom's trying to sort of bestow on you is that you can work your whole life, but if when the opportunity knocks, you've got to be ready for it. And you've got to you be miss ready it, for, yeah. Because you could, you could miss it, and then suddenly, you know, it's like a fork in the road, and you take the wrong fork by accident. You've got you to work as hard as you possibly can, and always be ready because that moment comes and you've got to take it with both hands and do your best and then be a soccer goalie you're just <laughs> yeah. always waiting like just be ready and yeah I mean those opportunities you know that you can have great music you can be a great DJ you can be a great producer but that one break can be something that can just change your life like in instantly. a few hours from now <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> and um, so it's 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 almost like uh, the harder you work, the luckier you get, is that famous saying. You know, being in that space where you're always ready for that small break, somebody misses their set or whatever, and you take over from them, or they're late and you play a longer set, and, you know, s somebody's there in the audience. And those are those crucial moments which can shape your career. And, and it's super easy these days. You just have to walk around with your flash disks and your, your flash yeah. drives in your pockets. Yeah, ready, yeah. Ready. Yeah. In the old days, you'd have to walk around <laughs> with a massive bag of, of vinyls. Look, I'm ready at all times. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got back at all times. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the story. Cool. Um, do you have questions? I think, like, mainly production wise, I think uh, you can have like a lot of information. Yeah? Yeah, I've heard that you guys playing um, live act, analog stuff. So what kind of drum machines, keyboards, I don't know, are you using? What is the best for you? So we use a lot of stuff in the studio and then we use other things for live just because practicality of traveling. Like we would love to have like all our drum machines and our mini Moog synthesizers yeah. and stuff, but obviously that's not possible. So uh, between us, we have three cases we travel with. I have my double bass, which is in, you know, we make it uh, a it's flight like a case. Snowboard case. Travel in a snowboard case. Because <laughs> if you put it in a flight case, like when you travel in America, the TSA, the Transport Security Authority, they just keep you know, they think it's a bomb every time. So, and then we have two suitcases where we've uh, had special foam routing put inside, and Dave has an Allen and Heath desk inside that. Um, what else? Yeah, have you which got? runs. It's basically, I run a I run Ableton Live off a, off a MacBook Pro with the uh, SSD drive. So that's you know, it's very fast, and you don't have any issues. And if it does crash, it boots up in like 20 seconds. So, and that runs via USB into the Allen Heath, which operates as a, as a um, sound card. And then we route all the instruments, the double bass, the sax, um, um, the flute, all of that routes into the desk, as well as um, Dom's has a, it's got an old school sequencer, sequen a MC9 it's and got a sequencizer. Really <laughs> 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 yeah, one. It yeah. actually is pretty much a sequencizer. Yeah. But, um, it's great, it's, it weighs like, it weighs a ton, but it's, but it's, it's really a hardware sequence. It's a nice big form. It's also got less big buttons, and you can like really get involved live. That's kind of why we've kept it on. We've, we've kind of like we brought it into the future. He's got a, a Akai. M, what's it? The MPK. MPK forty nine. It's actually the synth station one, which you can plug an iPad into. Yeah. Um, so I run apps off there, like the Mini Moog app by Arturia. Yes, yeah, and um, sam there's like a sampler program which you can use uh, piano, like a nice piano VST. Um, and uh, you know that's and no much nicer sometimes and I don't want to have another MacBook Pro on the stage running off with like yeah, the software touch, instruments the touch, it's more tactile the, you know, the, pa the pads are much easier like the iPads and stuff I also run an iPad 
running um, Touchable, um, which controls Ableton. So I have to actually touch the computer. I have a I have a small little um, like Apple Apple Airport uh, like um, access point, and then the computer connects to that, and the iPad connects to that. So everything just talks to each other, um, and then. But it's all patched, so we just open our cases, yeah. take it out, so you we switch it on. Plug and power it's in and join the two. I run a, a Chaos Pad 3 as well, just for like effects and for um, live looping. And I've got a, a sampler, a hardware sampler, SP404. The, SP the SPX404. Right. It's a newer one. EX. EX. Um, and that's just basically running for like one shot samples and like like pillars. And, and then. <laughs> And then that's also run, we also run that as a backup because you never know it's anything. If anything can happen, it will happen live and it will happen to you when you, you know, <laughs> just when you don't. Just when you don't want it to happen. We had a show at the at uh, Sensation White uh, a few years back where a Dutch fan came up. And he was a huge fan. He's like, hey guys, we were playing the VIP room what? somewhere. And he was holding his drink and he leant over Dave's laptop. Well, no, it was his mixing desk and just no, he just poured the whole drink into the mixing desk. Literally uh, two minutes before the show. And we started playing, and it sounded fine. And then <laughs> it one minute, fine. 58 seconds in, <laughs> the worst noise you ever heard yeah. in your life started coming through the speakers. It, was like <laughs> it went like a filter. It was like <laughs> <laughs> So then we had to do a DJ set. But, um, you did? Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. But, uh, it's much you know, difficulty. <laughs> 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 but, um, so you basically, that's another thing. You know, be, be prepared for that stuff as well. So like in our setup, we have a, we have a backup so that you know, if anything were to go wrong, we can still perform. Because at the end of the day, a, the, if the fans have come to see you, or even if the fans haven't come to see you, but there's the promoters paying you, he's not going to be very happy when you say, oh, my dog ate my USB drive, you know? Yeah, or you washed it or something. Or <laughs> I lost it, or I, I don't know. I just and also, the audience appreciates it when you make an effort, like when there's been technical problems and they can see, like we sometimes do things where there's a power failure, Dave will just go out in the front with a saxophone and just start playing, just acoustically, and you know, get people clapping along, and then power switches back on. And, and sometimes that can actually lift the vibe of the show even higher than it was just doing what we were doing before. Another thing we do technically is um, we run uh, through the Wi-Fi router. We travel with, a, with a, visual, a visual guy, VJ. And we've had a whole lot of visuals designed to our tracks, which are synced. When, when Dave triggers in Ableton on Touchable, you know, he triggers the scenes it sends a MIDI note over Wi-Fi with OSC to front of house. <laughs> so <laughs> you can have the visual exactly in time. It triggers another MacBook at the front, which then plays the music and the video in time. And, the and that allows us to be able to have visuals which are always in sync without playback, which a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of controversy over a lot of DJs. It's just a space bar from front of house and some filter so, yeah, So they kind of link each, each um, video is kind of linked to the audio track. So you know, if you decide to play the track really short or really long. Or if you, know, you want to trigger the drop, we'll have that, that video clip which is, you know, as the kick comes in, the screens yeah. go onto a blinder or something like that. Um, and then, then on a playout, if we want to loop it because Dave's playing the saxophone, it'll keep that, v that part of the visual going again and again and again. And those sort of things, I think, that's what's amazing about when we started. None of this was possible. And what you can do today with technology is just incredible. And yeah, you guys are lucky. <laughs> <laughs> the VJ kind of um, part of it. What, what software does that computer run? Um, the, the, the VJ yeah. software runs VDMX. Yeah. And that can take MIDI triggers. So the tricky, the tricky part really is getting the, the, the two computers to talk to each other over the Wi-Fi. That's the trickier thing, but on the with the apples, it's it's not that bad, you mm. know. If it was a PC, you might need a degree in <laughs> in sort of computing, but or networking. But um, basically, um, you can connect. You, you yeah, you can you can read up on it online, but you, it's fairly simple to connect. Once you've connected the two to the same Wi-Fi zone, um, and then you can you go into the MIDI preferences in the in the Apple, and you'll see the the, the routing, and you'll see the other computer will connect, and then you can allow it to actually, you know, sp to speak to each other. 
and then you're just sending that MIDI notes basically we just sit we sit in the studio and, and we go okay well this one's this one so we press it and then it, it it's the other the video max gets armed and then it goes okay well it's this note c4 and then triggers this video the next note, note, the a1 next note. triggers so it's, this video that's pretty simple I mean, we, we've even got it now so that we can change the tempo and lighting because oh. that was because that was a bit of a pain at first because we if the videos were made at like 127 then we always had to play at 127, which kind of sucks. If you wanted the visuals to stay without um, drifting. But now, you know, we can, we obviously have to communicate with our technical guy and say, okay, well, listen, we're starting slower today because we get, we're feeling a bit slower or something, yeah. <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, funnily enough, our music's actually getting slower. It started quite slow and it got like fast, and now we're kind of, we're kind of going deeper again. I think it's just the sounds are kind of yeah. changing, and we, we also just changing, we're getting more into that. So. How is the scene today in South Africa? It's huge, man. It's <laughs> since we started. Um, you know, certain areas of the scene are difficult. Like the club scene is, it's always difficult to run clubs um, in South Africa because um, it's such a seasonal, a seasonal tourist destination, especially Cape Town. Um, but festivals are massive there. So we've just had the Ultra Music Festival come to South Africa. Tomorrowland's coming. Um, and but never mind that. In the summer, we have uh, yeah. we got a massive Cytron scene. Where like literally every weekend in summer there is a side trance festival of at least three to five to ten thousand people, and literally. a lot of deep house as well. And um, Johannesburg is a massive deep house kind of place. So it's, it has grown a lot since yeah, it five times easy in oh, yeah. size. And there's a lot of more. Um, there's a lot more uh, live acts as well oh, that yeah. have started. Jeez, um, tons. <laughs> Since when we started, we were the only one, and now there's maybe, you know... The 15. one really good thing about dance music in South Africa is two or three of the really big um, sort of commercial radio DJs, like the talking DJ, disc jockey DJs, are actually well-known um, house DJs, mm. which is really cool because they, you know, they support, like, the local dance artists. music a lot, you know, which does make a massive difference. I think it's yet to translate into some of the local artists al alongside us actually touring in the rest of the world. But I think over the next few years, you'll definitely be seeing a lot more uh, South African DJs like you might find Australian DJs. Um, you know, so that's exciting. Okay, thank you. So far. Thank you. <laughs> well, good luck, guys. Okay, great. So we have a lunch break now? Sounds good. Yeah, perfect.